Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Neo Stylist Lou Sneary in the viewfinder, looking gorgeous, looking gorgeous. We're not on our own today though. In this care collab, I am joined by Orchids and Finbos, Attainable Green, and plants and other things. Their video links will be in the description below. It might interest you to see how others grow their Neo Stylus Lucneri in other weather conditions and in other hemispheres where it is winter right now. Mine happens to be in bloom. There we are. That is why it's a popular hybrid. The end. <laughs> this is such a charming, charming cross and I'm very, very glad that I can actually grow it here because the parents being Neo Phoenicia falcata and Rinco stylus celestis, yes. The falcata side, not a problem, no issues whatsoever. The Rinco stylus celestis parent, that is where my issues come in because I have all the adverse conditions that you would think a Rinco stylus celestis needs. Never mind the heat, I can provide that to a certain degree for a certain time of year, but no humidity. So my average humidity during the hot months of the year which the other parent much prefers, is about 30%. And that is not something that is very, very conducive to successfully growing Rinco stylus anything. I have a happy medium going on here with the Neo Falcata that I can actually grow very, very well in my climate all year round with this Neo Stylus Lucneri. The fact that it is doing well for me is because of the Neo Falcata parent. However, I have made a few mistakes this past winter. One was, I took more the Neo Falcata parent as the dominant parent and thought, well, Neo Falcatas can be in a cold environment because my Neo Falcata lives outside all year round. Turns out that I left it outside on a night that had about 10, 11 degrees Celsius. And yeah, you can see that it didn't appreciate it very much because we have a little bit of cold damage going on on the leaves that had been much protected during the winter indoors in my dining room. My dining room can go down to 14 degrees Celsius, but that is fine for the orchid. The 10 degrees night was a little bit too much and we can clearly see, don't do that anymore. So I would say the temperatures at which I will be keeping this in future is always around the 13 degrees Celsius mark. When that night temperature kicks in, I will bring my orchid back inside like I have done for many years since I got her. And it has always worked well for me. I got a little bit ahead of myself and bold thinking, well, the Neo parent should be more dominant. Surely it can tolerate a little bit more of a cool down than 13 degrees Celsius. Uh, no. Rinco stylus is very, very obvious in this parentage and what it prefers. The hot months of the year, well, it's an easy grower for me. I have to mist it continuously for an extended period of time to make sure that it gets the right nutrients. I have to get out there early in the morning so I don't burn the roots because of my low, low humidity. It still has to somehow absorb nutrients, but then if the heat comes in very quickly, the water can evaporate, leaving salts on the roots. So it is a bit of a challenge for me because I have mine growing in a basket and it's just with lava rock and a very mangy looking microfiber piece in there from many a moon ago to help me to keep the humidity around the base for a little bit longer. But you can see I've got a root tip. It's appreciating that manky old microfiber. And I have a couple of extended roots that are finally just staying in the basket. There's one that extended this year and it's grown all the way down, which is really nice. Very pleased about that. That helps my workload a little bit more knowing that they're hydrating and then there's another one just starting again and digging its way into the media. I'm really pleased about that because I have to mist a lot and I almost almost risked losing the growing point of this second fan here that it's been growing since last year but thankfully that leaf in there is extending trying to see there we go thank goodness for that that was close Considering the amount of misting I have to do, um, that can happen if all of a sudden I do that too late in the day and there's too much water in there and suddenly where'd the wind go? <clears throat> yeah, you can see that there is also magnesium deficiency in mine and that is a fine balance as well as to get the fertilizer onto the and into the orchid fast enough before the warm temperatures dry it out. 
clearly in the winter, I don't have to miss that much because it slows right down. It, it doesn't grow as fast. It doesn't mean that it stops growing, but I do not fertilize a lot in the winter, if at all. I have to be so careful with anything that's got Rhynchostylus in its parentage because of the roots and burning the roots, getting salt build up on the roots and then taking the roots out. That's why mine is a little bit on the deficient side. I'm trying to work with it at this point in time where I am only applying Epsom salts in two or three mistings a week. But I'm very, very quick to afterwards go around with plain RO water again and flush the Epsom salts off the roots, hoping that the orchid will take up some of the Epsom salts through the leaves as well as the roots by the time I come around to flush it. And that's why I'm doing it a little bit more often in the week as opposed to once a month or something with this orchid, just to correct that magnesium deficiency. It has gotten a little bit better, so I'm happy about that. I've been comparing previous footage of the leaves with what I'm seeing now, and I'm seeing a marginal improvement. The blotches aren't as evident as they were. The magnesium deficiency is also clear because of the cold damage. If it hadn't had that deficiency, it might have been able to handle the cold a little bit better, but I'm not going to experiment on that at all. But in the summer now, I'm really Apart from the magnesium, I'm also giving it like 100 parts per million every day, every morning of MSU fertilizer and always at 6.3 so that the magnesium and the calcium can be absorbed in a very short period of time before I get around to flushing it again with plain RO water. In the months of May throughout September, I have to miss this orchid at least twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Now that I've noticed the damage, that I almost incurred by losing a fan to crown rot. I am definitely not as aggressive. I am more around the outskirts of the basket as opposed to going straight in with my sprayer thinking, happy days, it's summer, it's hot, let's blast away. Nope, not anymore. I'm being very cautious there. I have another fan growing in the back here. And I'm really hoping that this fan next year will be blooming size because that is amazing. So that is about the care. How about the beauty? Hmm. The beauty is that once a neofalcata finishes blooming, the loose neary takes over and the fragrance of a neofalcata is back during the day. Neofalcatas are fragrant at night, late afternoon, into the evening. Loose nearies all day, every day, for as long as she is in bloom. And what a fragrance it is. I have never had the honor of smelling a wrinkle stylus celestis so i wouldn't know what that smells like but to me this is my neo falcata all over again even though it has finished blooming but i don't have to get up and go into the dark to smell it delicious divine elegant citrusy powdery beautiful fragrance and strong i'm very pleased with this spike this year it matches the spike i had last year last year it bloomed twice for me not sure that we're going to get that out of this one again this year. However, one spike of this caliber, including a little bit of magnesium deficiency, I'm happy. The light levels I give it are extremely bright, even though it looks like perma shade. It hangs in the blooming alley, whether it is in bloom or not. Very, very much protected from harsh light. The freckling itself on these leaves, even though it is not in bright sun or direct sun, is a testament to just how much light this orchid is getting. Not to be confused with the freckling of magnesium deficiency. That is completely different. This kind of freckling right here, that is sufficient light levels. That's a good sign. So basically she lives in my blooming alley every time that she's outside. That includes the winter. The angle of the sun will then determine that she gets direct sun during the winter months while the sun is lower in the sky. But I do not move her out of that location even if that winter sun hits her. She can take that. There is no burning and there isn't excessive freckling during the winter. Once the temperatures drop once more below 13 degrees Celsius, I will bring her inside and then she hangs on the van der Rack in my dining room. And then in the morning, I take her out again and then usually by 5 p.m., 6 p.m., I bring her back in again. That is during the months of December through March, if I'm lucky. Sometimes it has to be a little bit in April as well, 
but it steadies out that the temperatures steady out a little bit to 13 degrees Celsius by April. I've had this orchid almost four years now, never been an issue for me. The only issues that I have where I say this is getting complicated is the larger she gets, the higher demands she has. And I am still dealing with a Rhynchostylus parent that hates my environment. That is the balance I'm working with right now. Make sure that she has no more deficiencies as she grows bigger and I can meet her demands the bigger she gets without inducing crown rot. However, taking all these factors into consideration, I consider myself armed and ready for the challenge so that we can possibly get another spike coming and then she becomes a basket full of fun and goodness and fragrance. If you have any questions about this orchid, if you have anything that I've brought to your attention that I need to circle back around on, please leave that in the comments below. Thank you very, very much for being here. And also, once again, just a little reminder, the description below has orchids and finbos, attainable green plants and other things, and their Neostylus lucneri, different setups, different environments, different hemispheres. I'm gonna head to their videos to see if there's something that I have missed with regards to the care of mine. And I really hope that you will also find the time to go and have a look-see how theirs are doing and what they are doing with theirs. Your time here watching my video is very much appreciated. Thank you so much. I hope to see you in the next video. And in the meantime, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, morning, night. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.